Now, as I move towards the end, the different variables are gonna change slightly as we approach the end here. And unfortunately, this is where I stop paying attention. All right, as we travel along here, I am totally killing it. This is awesome. Everything's turning out sweet. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. Oh, my God. What have I done? The pulse welding setting on your machine is a fun function to play with. It can be used for many different jobs and it can be customized specifically for all kinds of projects that you will do with your machine. Basically, the way that this one works is we're gonna set two levels. The first thing you're gonna set is a high point for your amperage. This will be the peak current. The other thing you're gonna set is the low point of the cycle as well. I usually refer to this on my channel as the low current level. As you can see here, I have my high current set for 100 amps and I have my low current set for about 40 amps. Now, now again, with the high amperage, I'm using a foot pedal. I'll be able to adjust that on the fly. So high amperage, we can set it with a bit of wiggle room. It's the low amperage we wanna focus on. The main thing I recommend that we focus on is making sure that our low amperage is not set too low. If your low point is set to a value that is actually set too low, what you're gonna see is in the low point of the cycle, your arc is gonna to begin to wander. It will have trouble keeping established. And you may see arc deflection as well. So if you're seeing your arc start to wander or any arc deflection at all, you know that value has been set too too low. All you gotta do is adjust your machine to a slightly higher value. Work your way up from there. Run a couple practice passes to make sure that this is now dialed in and get all the fine tuning done before you start working on your piece. Like I said, I usually find I can set the high point to kind of whatever I need. I'm always using the foot pedal to regulate this half of the cycle. So while the low point has to be set pretty strategically, the high point I can kind of fluctuate up and down a little bit with my foot pedal. Especially when I'm traveling towards the end of a joint, foreshadowing. I can use my foot pedal to make sure things don't get too hot. But no matter what you do with your foot pedal, the foot pedal will have nothing to do with regulating the low point. That's why I always take extra time to make sure I really get dialed in for the settings on my low point. The next thing that we're gonna adjust here is the percentage between the high point and the low point. I personally prefer to always have a little bit more percentage set on the low side of the cycle. I find that this gives my puddle a really good chance to properly freeze, and especially like we're doing with working with thin material today, this is gonna help us to prevent overheating. I personally find too much of the high high side of the cycle, even 50-50, I find things don't really cool down enough and cool quickly enough for me. You can see I have it set approximately 60% on the low side of the cycle and 40% on the high side of the cycle. All right, the last thing I'm gonna adjust on my machine is the overall frequency. This dictates the pulses per second. Obviously a higher frequency means more pulses per second, a lower, less pulses, you get the idea. Myself personally, if I'm turning the pulse on on my machine, I'm using it for a good reason. This is why I usually set it for a slower pulse count. Again, how I was explaining, I really wanna focus more so on the low side of the cycle and making sure I can control things to make sure they don't get too hot. Allowing for a little bit of extra time between high and low, this is always gonna allow me to have a little bit of extra time to do the stepping consistency and stepping pattern that I prefer. And as you can see, I have it set for approximately 0.7 pulses per second here. So depending on the material thickness that I'm working with, the settings I'm always really gonna focus on are the low point of the cycle, as well as the frequency of my cycle. The other two variables we went over, I usually find these to be a pretty good ballpark to start with. These usually get me pretty close to the results I want. All right, now that we got the machine set up, let's take a look at the joint and how I have prepared it. So we can see here, this is relatively thin material. This is 0.060. And when we're working with stuff like this, we really wanna make sure we take the time to put it together properly. Any kind of gap in this setup is going to present me with a problem, especially as I start to move with the pass. I wanna make sure I have this tacked together properly. You can see here I have a slight overlap in between the two surfaces, but there is a tiny bit of a gap as far as a corner joint goes here. If at any point, anything with this joint gets a little bit frisky on me, what I'm gonna do is have my filler rod in hand. I'm gonna make sure I act quickly, foreshadowing, and I'm gonna add a touch of filler material if it's needed. So if I have a little bit of a gap left here, as far as the outside corner joint goes, it'll provide me with room to put filler material in cleanly. Foreshadowing. But the main thing when you're putting a joint together like this, keep it clean, keep everything nice and tight, you should be all right. All right, so our settings are good. Our joint is put together properly. Time to light up, let's go. So this is gonna be pretty standard to most things I'm doing, but especially so at the start. I really wanna make sure everything gets settled in properly right at the beginning, and that I don't start moving too soon. At the beginning, we wanna make sure that we take the time to push a little bit of material through to the other side, because we wanna make sure we get proper penetration. Although this stuff is really thin, so we don't wanna hang out too long. Now again, take another look. Take a look at the care I take to set everything up at the beginning before 
before I start moving. Now that things are settled in perfectly, it's time to move on and maintain everything I've set up with each pulse. As long as I'm watching my puddle closely and I'm keeping my filler material at the ready in case I need it, foreshadowing, things should cruise along just fine. All right, a good start stop in the middle here. Get comfortable, get reset, and let's start the second half. Now, as I move towards the end, because things are tacked on the backside, the different variables are gonna change slightly as we approach the end here. And unfortunately, this is where I stop paying attention. All right, as we travel along here, I am totally killing it. This is awesome. Everything's turning out sweet. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. Oh, my God. What have I done? <laughs> All right, as things have become extremely hot towards the end, you remember what I said I was gonna do? Keep my filler rod ready? I did not have my filler rod ready in time. And we can see I have a little bit of a mess I have to recover from here. Oh boy, hey, it happens sometimes. So let's break down how everything looks overall. All right, so the main thing we wanna see with this joint is good starts. We can see at my starts, everything settled in really well right at the beginning, both at the beginning of the pass and at the stop start in the middle. I made sure for those first couple pulses, everything was settled down perfectly before I began to move. Now, once I began moving, stepping consistency is the name of the game when running pulse. We want to make sure that each pulse is the same stepping distance away from the one previous. And with each pulse, we want to make sure that each one sinks down to the same consistency as the other ones. Overall, looking at the consistency of the reinforcement, especially we want a relatively smooth stop start in the middle. This one turned out all right. All right, smooth welds with great consistency and uh, oh, oh crap. Okay, I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna ignore that. We got a shiny finish that looks like dimes. Oh, oh wait, oh my God. Oh, ah. When we're stepping long we have machine like consistency and control with precision oh my god what the heck happened we see consistent and smooth penetration on the backside exactly <laughs> oh my god it looks like a gentleman's butt crack for the amount of demos i've done on my channel once in a while i'm gonna drop the ball i'm only human it's all good i could have refilmed it and not told you about it right but this one was fun i was laughing doing this one it's all good all right for the record the next day i did set up another one because i could not sleep over this one at night got a redemption one looked pretty good but i'm glad i got a chance to come back, put some tunes on, get a redemption one the next day. Let me know if you tried the setting out on your machine. Let me know in the comments below. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. For Pacific Arctic Welding, my name is Dusty. Phil and chill. Thank you for watching. Talk to you soon. Peace.